Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome along to Donington Park for what will be coming up will be round 12 of the Monoposto Racing Championship. We saw a great race from them yesterday where Dan Gore, who has already secured the Mono 1000 category, went on to claim overall victory from Chris Davidson, who claimed top honours in the F3 category, but finished second overall. And Jason, Sim, uh, Jason Timms made it three different class winners inside the top three as he went to uh, victory lane in third position overall, but picked Picked up the Mono 1400 class win. This is the penultimate race of the season that's coming up. We've got a further race, the final championship round coming up later on over the course of the day. But it's a very, very full and a very busy grid as well. So much so is that we can't accommodate everybody on the grid at Donington Park on the Grand Prix circuit this weekend. We can start a maximum of 36 cars, which means we have three reserves. And you can see those cars queued up in the pit lane, ready to go should any of their fellow competitors have problems over the course of the formation lap or should we get a, a race stop in the early stages of the race then potentially those cars queued up in the pit lane could slot in to fill up the grid slot so it's a fantastic position for the Monoposto Racing Club to be in who have been providing some excellent value for money single-seater racing for a number of years and as I mentioned yesterday it certainly gives a home to some of the older cars that maybe have become obsolete from the championships that they were first ever built for but the Monoposto Racing Club gives a home to pretty much almost any single seater you can get your hands on uh, providing it meets the championship regulations or if you're one of those very clever engineers and you wish to build your own car and we've seen a few people do those in the past the you can build your own car and compete in it again, providing it meets the generic championship regulations. So it's largely Formula 3 cars out there. Some of those might have been converted to run on motorcycle engines. We see a mix of Formula Fords, both 1600s and 2000s. We see the Formula Jedis out there as well. Uh, we've got a Formula Renault on the grid as well. So there's a, a range of different chassis that you can do and, and subject to either the engine that's in them or the age of the chassis or which formula it was built for dictates as to which one of the seven different classes that you can pop your way into. Uh, we were blessed with fantastic weather conditions at Donington yesterday. It felt more like summer than autumn. Uh, we're back to autumn today, I'm afraid to say. It's been uh, changeable weather over the course of this morning. The cars are lined up on the grid for what is going to be for the Monoposto Racing Club, a rolling start. We saw rolling starts for all them yesterday. So the cars are there on the grid. The last couple of cars just trickling their way around and into position at the tail end of the field now. Brolly's still up, but I don't think it is raining at the moment. I think the rain cloud, the last one that we've had, has just passed over. And you can see there's very little wind in the background. You can see the flag hardly moving at all. It's down on the flagpole. So uh, any rain that comes over is, is likely to stay for a while because it's not going to sort of blow away very quickly, I'm afraid. And as you can see, yeah, not only the flags aren't moving, but the wind turbines, the wind generators aren't moving in the distance either. So a very, very still day here, as it was yesterday, to be fair. There was very little wind here yesterday, but it was warmer ambient conditions and sunshine. So the car's heading off on to the formation lap. Let's guide you through the grid. So we will see, starting from pole position, it is Dan Gore, the number 80 car that starts from pole position. And alongside, it will be Jason Timms. Row two of the grid is Chris Davidson and Anthony Gauntlet. And row three of the grid sees Chris Woodhouse line up alongside Lee Fern. The fourth row of the grid is Neil Harrison and Martin Wright, with row five being Robin Dore in the unusual Tom's Toyota alongside James Lederman. The sixth row of the grid, Miles Castaldini, lines up alongside. It will be Bryn Tootle that will sit there on the outside of the sixth row of the grid. And row seven sees Carl O'Brien at the wheel of the Lee Stone. He had a great drive through the order yesterday, lined up alongside Terry Clark. James Rimmer has for company Chris Baldwin on row number eight. And row nine is where we see Nigel Davis, and he lines up alongside Russ Giles. The tenth row of the grid, Morgan McCourt, sits there on the tenth row of the grid. I can already hear squeals of tyres and a potential spin in the background. Uh, he has got Declan Wright for company. And onto row number 11, that's where we'll see Simon Tate and James Tanser. Row number 12 is Bruno Costa in the JKS, sitting alongside Jared Wood at the wheel of his Formula Vauxhall Lotus. And row 13 is Robert Smith and Tom Wheatley. The 14th row of the grid sees the Formula Renault in the field of Juan Moreno, lining up alongside Will McAteer, who had a spin at turn number one yesterday, but other than that, had a good drive back through the field. And row 15 is Phil Davis and Chris Levy with his Formula Ford 2000 Van Diemen RF83. The 16th row of the grid is Sam Don and Peter Whitmore. The penultimate row of the grid, which is row number 17, sees Jeff Thurman, a multiple champion in Monoposto racing, line up alongside 
third. It will be Rodney Toff that will sit there in 34th position. And the final row of the grid is Davy Jones. Let's see what he's got in his locker uh, from 35th on the grid. And alongside is number 66, which is Darren Richie's. So, uh, Darren Richards, rather. So that gives you the full grid, full 36 cars on the grid for this one and as we say three cars still waiting patiently in the pit lane that they did not get their entries in in time and therefore they are classified as reserves and will have to keep their fingers crossed that misfortune falls upon fellow competitors if they're able to take part in this race there is a further race to come so maybe if any cars are damaged in this one and uh, not able to be repaired they might be able to get a race later on but uh, three cars that uh, we can't accommodate on what is a very, very full grid. And for this weekend, uh, we have got all the Monoposto classes racing together. That is not necessarily always the case. There's your usual Tom's Toyota. Not many Tom's Formula 3 cars were built, really. And as you can see, uh, Robin Dorr has opted for wet tyres on his car. Not everybody has, so we've got a mixture of wet tyres and slick tyres in there. And I think if I were on wet tyres, I think I'd be slightly concerned at the moment because looking at the track surface and also looking out of the commentary box window, I think wet tyres are going to be overheating very, very quickly. But I can't see what rain clouds might be blowing in from my position. It looks grey, but look at the track there. You know, it's dry on the racing line, isn't it, as the cars come down. So I think poor old Robin Dorr, he might have chosen the wet tyres that are available to these drivers but the number 28 car I think might struggle unless there's a change of conditions because it looks sort of more slightly damp a little bit greasy for sure on the first few laps but again down through the Craner curves again you can see there is a fully dry line all the way down through the Craner curves but in defence of anybody that's out there on wets including the pole sitter which is Dan Gore they'd have gone to the assembly area the best parts of 20 minutes ago and the assembly area where cars don't circulate particularly will look wet the track itself where there's a bit more breeze it's a bit more exposed there's been other cars circulating in some of the support races that are on the program here uh, the drivers and the teams aren't to know exactly what the track conditions are like so it is a bit of a roll of the dice really uh, and as we say you know there could be another rain cloud blowing in so it may well be that the wets are the way to go and the slicks aren't who will know uh, well we'll only know ourselves over the course of the next 15 minutes or so because that is how long this race is scheduled for the 12th round of the Monoposto Championship they conclude their season here all of the other previous rounds have been uh, double header events so they started their championship season here at Donington Park but that was on the national circuit on the 10th and the 11th of April then they moved on to Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix circuit on the 8th and 9th of May down to Castle Coombe in Wiltshire for what was uh, the next weekend of racing and that took place in mid part of June the 12th and the 13th of June and Alton Park in Cheshire uh, on the 24th of July for what was scheduled to be two races some of the classes they were split that weekend they had separate grids for the different classes some classes got two races others only got one because of a, an on-track incident in a separate championship which delayed the proceedings and then after that last time out uh, all the classes were amalgamated again on the 14th and 15th of October on, at Silverstone on the Grand Prix circuit there for the previous rounds coming into this weekend so we had the race yesterday which was secured by Dan Gore Dan Gore will start from pole position Chris Davidson who finished second in yesterday's race actually starts third on the grid for this one his is the sort of grey car with the day glow nose and we, uh, side pods and nose cone to it Chris Davidson and Jason Timms who lines up on the outside of the front row of the grid his is the dark blue and white machine Dallara chassis but motorcycle engine that sits in the back of it he finished third in yesterday's race but starts on the front row for today this grid is formed based on the fastest lap times that were posted in yesterday's race so it's not second fastest times it's not results from yesterday it's fastest lap times from yesterday's race one that give us this grid for the second race of the weekend is the way the regulations are written so we're about to get the penultimate race of the season underway for the monoposto championship dan gore in the jedi the black car on pole position alongside is jason timms at the wheel of his number three delara the red lights are on on the gantry and we're about to go racing for the penultimate time this season in the monoposto championship some cars on wet some cars on slick Stan Gore is away and leading the race a big wiggle from Jason Timms as he tried to get the power down but Chris Davidson has already taken second place away from him and it looks as though also sneaking through may well be Neil Harrison who's had a really good start at the wheel of the number 10 Delara a spin for Robin Dorr in the middle of the pack he uh, think reverses the car <laughs> almost out of harm's way you can see just how wet the grass is there but for Robin Dorr that has split the pack really and already the front three cars are sprinting away Dan Gore leads Chris Davidson second Neil Harrison 
in third position and fourth place I think it's Chris Woodhouse that's there in fourth place at the wheel of his Dallara but everybody is treading very gingerly down through the old hairpin and the grainer curves uh, I think it's still wet and greasy out there and of course um, the tyres at this stage still not fully up to temperature so you need to just bed things in over the course of the first couple of laps and I'm afraid Robin Dora is out of the race he's probably lost the engine on the Tom's Toyota and that's an enormous shame for Robin who uh, lined up ninth on the grid and in yesterday's race finished inside the top 10 he was in 10th position in yesterday's race car is undamaged though so hopefully we'll see him back out for the final race of the season later on today so the cars threading their way through Coppice Corner at the tail end of the field at the front end of the field Dan Gore heads down in towards the braking area for the Melbourne hairpin for the first time runs a little bit wide mid corner there but has enough of a gap between himself and, and Chris Davidson so as not to worry Neil Harrison is there in third place fourth place is going to be Chris Woodhouse and it looks like it's Miles Castaldini that's there in fourth place Jason Timms who started on the front row of the grid is rather going backwards at the moment you can see how much he's struggling in these conditions to apply the power and I think he is on the slick tyres by the look of things he just can't get the power down so it's probably greasier out there than the, the cameras are tending to show at this stage looks like it's almost a dry track doesn't it but grip seems to be at a premium at the moment Chris Woodhouse, number four, moving around to try and attack Mark Harrison. There's a spin for Martin Wright as well. Now, he started eighth on the grid, and he's on wet tyres, and he's had a problem as well. So I think everybody in general is just struggling with the conditions. Just that stage, I think, that racing drivers hate. They either like it fully dry or they like it fully wet. Well, to the eye, the circuit looks pretty much dry, but clearly the conditions are just that greasy and horrible, and everybody's feeling their way round and trying to work out exactly where the grip is or in some cases isn't Simon Tate diving through that's up the inside of James Rimmer there Simon had problems in yesterday's race and ultimately retired just four laps in had been going really well before the problems befell him but nice to see that number 15 Delara back out again and working his way through the order and with Simon Tate having done just a few laps yesterday of course he didn't really get that much time to put in a quick lap so he started 21st on the grid and after the first lap was up to 16th position so a great first lap from him James Rimmer wheel to wheel with Nigel Davis Nigel Davis allows the door to open up a little bit and the next of the cars is perhaps going to squeeze his way through and pass Nigel there yeah now James Rimmer is under pressure from the next of the cars looking to squeeze its way through the number 29 car looking to dive through gain the position but he's going to lose out again to Nigel Davis as they head in towards the braking area for the chicane this time through so James Tancer can't quite make it stick but he will have another go this time and has got the inside line as they come down in towards the Melbourne hairpin Davis up the inside of James Rimmer so Jedi passed very early Delara Formula 3 car and the number 29 car also in the hands of James Tancer squeezes his way through so two places lost there for James Rimmer I'm afraid who had a, a brief trip through the gravel trap yesterday down at the old hairpin so 15 minute race 11 minutes still remaining so full is the grid that everybody has got somebody to squabble with really Dan Gore in the lead of the race has just set the fastest lap of the race 1 minute 40.033 and you can see the advantage that he's got now between himself and Chris Davidson it's the distance between the exit of McLean's corner and the approach towards Coppice Corner. You could see the car moving around there. You could just see the slide of the car as he was applying the power and just keeping the tail end in check. No real oversteer at all, but just letting the car drift its way out of the corner onto the brakes and through the S's where new curves have been installed for this weekend. Lots of drivers have been cutting uh, the corner there previously new curbs have been installed and I think for some of the drivers yesterday was very much a learning experience to realize how much curb you could take and how much you couldn't take and I think a few of them have perhaps ended up with a little bit of damage to their cars taking too much curb through those areas but that's what they're designed for to keep the drivers off them so Gore leads by a second or so from Chris Davidson in second place further down through the order some great squabbles going on at the moment up towards Coppice Corner there goes Jared Wood Will McAteer just sweeping across the nose of Declan Wright's car so Declan Wright at the wheel of number 71 the gem that's one of the self-built cars that we've got in the field and now Will McAteer at the wheel of that white and multicolour car looking to try and work his way further up through the order a spin and recovering back onto track that was the number 36 car I think that was the spinning and looking to try and work its way back onto the circuit there 
as Russ Giles is now going wheel to wheel with Juan Moreno and puts the Dallara up the inside of the Formula Renault as skittering off onto the wet grass goes Martin Wright and in the background we've also had a spin as well for a couple of cars uh, and I think one of those is the number 12 car of Phil Davis the other car I think might be Sam Don possibly the two Formula Fords that have had issues Sam Don's the number 73 car so nine minutes to go Will McAteer is the busiest on track at the moment that number 23 car coming under pressure and should just hang on to the place still Declan Wright at the wheel of the gem then it's Terry Clark that is the next of those but I'm afraid safety car is coming out so SC boards illuminated the marshals waving the yellow flags around the track and that's probably because we've got this issue down at the old hairpin and that is Sam Don's car that has had a problem so Martin Wright went off we saw the spin then for Phil Davis in the lighter blue Formula Ford and I think some of the drivers at the moment haven't quite reacted to the safety car boards so once the safety car comes out there should be no overtaking and I think there's a couple of the drivers that perhaps haven't quite worked out yet that the safety car is out there so of course they're concentrating on the cars around them not as always looking to spot the flags in their peripheral vision uh, and that's not you know a defense for them in that respect but sometimes some drivers just do, do take a few more seconds to react to the safety car boards and if there has been any overtaking they'll realize that and they'll reshuffle their own order and hold their hands up to the fact that they've made a small uh, error but you know, when the safety car is out there for the safety of any marshals that are working trackside and we can't go racing without the marshals we forever are indebted for everything that they do for us you know the safety car and the yellow flags mean no overtaking because you could have marshals working trackside trying to clear up whatever has caused the problem which we think is Sam Downs car so it's just come to a halt down at the Melbourne hairpin and for whatever reason can't get fired back up once more so on the safety car here with seven and a half minutes just under to go uh, number 80 Dan Gore leads the race and leads the mono 1000 class in second place is number 31 which is Chris Davidson who leads the uh, mono f3 class in third place is another mono f3 car it's number four Chris Woodhouse and fourth place it's another mono 1000 car which is number 78 miles Castaldini Anthony Gauntlet number 20 is there in fifth at the moment and sixth is number 10 Neil Harrison who started well but just seems to have dropped back down through the order again a little bit more seventh place is the number 38 car which is the least own of uh, Carl O'Brien uh, in seventh place eighth place is going to be number 40 which is Chris Baldwin who started 16th on the grid up into eighth position ninth place is the mono 2000 class leader which is number 26 former champion Brent Tootle and completing the top 10 at the moment is the number 17 car which is Bruno Costa now he's come from 23rd on the grid so uh, he's had, uh, another driver that's had a, a real good run through the order other class leaders that are not inside the top 10 at the moment will remember that Jason Tim started from the outside of the front row of the grid well, he's 14th now, but still leads the Mono 1400 class at the wheel of the number three car. So he leads his class. And the only other class leader we need to pick up on is currently down in 22nd position. And it's car number 23. And that is the white and multicoloured Reynard, which harks back to uh, 1992. So almost 20 years old now, that chassis. And that is Will McAteer at the wheel of the number 23 car. And that gives you... Uh, not only the top 10 that has also picked out our relative class leaders in this penultimate round of the championship there are still uh, individual championships to be decided the, of, for the classes Dan Gore has already secured the Mono 1000 class Jeff Fern prior to this weekend had already secured the Mono 1600 class Ben Stiles who is not with us this weekend had already secured the Mono 1800 class and actually if you looked across all of the classes Ben Stiles was leading the championship overall but it's really class champions that we look for in Monoposto the others that are still to be decided we're about to go green once more a Mono F3 where Lee Fern is on 87 points and Neil Harrison is on 79 but we get the race back underway there's no overtaking until they get to the start finish line five minutes remaining and as they all work their way up towards Redgate Corner there's lots of back marker lappery to be done here as Neil Housen's looking to try and squeeze his way through past some of the slower traffic as he sits there in sixth position with the number 10 Delara. he's got quite a bit of a gap between himself and the car behind her is looking to try and build a bit of a gap through the traffic because that is the orange Lee Stone that would be behind him so here they come down in towards the Melbourne hairpin now there goes Anthony Gauntlet there's Neil Harrison there is then the Lee Stone which is in the hands of 
O'Brien, Carl O'Brien. So where was Miles Castaldini? I didn't quite see where the number 78 car was on that shot. I wonder if Miles Castaldini's perhaps lost a position or two at the wheel of his Van Diemen RF 94. Everybody else safely through the old hairpin. You can see the ever-drying line now, actually. So here comes the black and orange car towards us. That's Anthony Gauntlet. Then behind, it's Carl O'Brien that sits behind. So he has managed to get himself ahead of Neil Harrison. Through comes Simon Tate, sneaking up the inside of Chris Baldwin. Is he going to make it stick? Yes, he does. So another place gained by Simon Tate, who, as I say, the number 15, Delara, was going so well in yesterday's race. Well, that is now going to put him up into potentially something like eighth position, maybe. Coming back at him, though, is Chris Baldwin onto the brakes down at the Melbourne hairpin. So having gained the place, he's in danger of losing it again once more. But I think he's got the legs on the number 40 car as they head into the braking area for Goddard's this time through. And we've now only got three minutes of the race remaining. Very late on the brakes goes the number 17 car of Bruno Costa. Up the inside of Jason Timms, who's really struggling in this race. The number three car. So he started on the outside of the front row of the grid. He will power back past the JKS in a straight line, you can see in the background of his shot, but really hasn't gone to plan for the man that started on the front row of the grid and is now down outside of the top ten. So on to the top of Hollywood they go once more. Neil Harrison in sixth position, coming under pressure from the charging Simon Tate. The two Dolaris together, all Simon Tate with a, a rear wheel just dropped onto the wet kerb there and that just unsettled the car as he went in towards the old hairpin. Just wagged its tail to a degree, the car. Caught it with a small amount of correction to the steering input. But just going to show that Simon Tate is still pushing hard, having come from 21st on the grid, the number 15 car. The red, the white and the blue Delara is now looking to try and haul itself inside the top six. There is Jason Timms who is leading. Ah, right, there's Miles Castaldini. So that is what happened to the number 78 car. So he did disappear. I did wonder where he'd gone. Hadn't seen him come through shot, but that answers the question. He's retired. I think that's uh, on the run out of Starkey's Bridge where he's pulled the car off. But for sixth position, can Neil Harrison hang on to it is the big question. In towards the braking area for the Melbourne hairpin now come. Neil Harrison under attack from Simon Tate. Simon Ta Tate is in that dichotomy. He wants to attack, but he's got to defend from Chris Baldwin. And now starting to come back at them all of a sudden is Jason Timms, who on his slick tyres, I think now, is starting to maybe feel as though the track conditions are heading towards his direction. The pendulum's swinging a little bit, but with only a couple of minutes to go, maybe slicks weren't quite the gamble that he thought they would be. I certainly thought slicks would be the way to go in this one, but the wet shod cars seem to have had the upper hand largely. There's Bryn Tootle. He's the last of the cars inside the top ten at the moment, but the fight for sixth works its way down through the Craner curves now. Neil Harrison under attack from Simon Tate, but both getting caught by Jason Timms, who is now starting to reel them back in again once more. Now, Jason Timms is, I think, going to secure, more than likely, the Mono 1400 Championship with this uh, class win that is coming up here. Even if he gets past the two cars ahead, he won't gain any more championship points because the two cars ahead of him both run in Mono F3, whereas the number three car is a Mono 1400 car. Delara chassis, they all are, but that one there has a Suzuki engine in the back, whereas the two cars ahead have road car-based engines in the back. Now, in the slipstream, can Simon Tate do anything about Neil Harrison? Jason Timms in a straight line with a slightly lighter car, I think might power his way past both of them. And Neil Harrison is going to lose two places in one there, is he? Uh, through goes Simon Tate, through goes Jason Timms, and Neil Harrison has to take to the grass in avoidance as a result of, I think, getting caught off line and breaking a little bit later than ideally he wanted to do. Now, Simon Tate breaks too late there, runs wide. Jason Timms easily picks him off. Then Simon Tate has a bit of movement on the exit of the corner and might lose the place back again to Neil Harrison. No, not quite. Now, that is Anthony Gauntlet. Now, he was in fifth position. He's had a spin coming out of Goddard's. So everybody that's going past now are gaining places by the look of things. He fires the Jedi back into life, but... Gauntlet, who was, what, fifth position, now comes over the start-finish line in 11th, I'm afraid to say, as Neil Harrison looks to try and re-attack Simon Tate, who's sweet across the nose of the slightly newer Delara. Can't quite make it stick there. Our race leader, though, is on the final lap at the moment, and Chris Davidson has gone through on this last lap and ahead of Dan Gore. Now, Davidson is on slick tyres. Dan Gore, we know... In fact, no, Davidson is on wet tyres as well. Dan Gore was on wet, but... 
It looks as though the fastest lap of the race is now going the way of Chris Woodhouse in third position. A woman at 36.004. He's about 1.7 seconds quicker than the pair of cars ahead. And what tyre is Chris Woodhouse on? Because it's certainly these conditions have made it very, very interesting. Wet would appear for the moment to have been the way to go. But had this been a 20-minute race rather than a 15, I think the slicks might have come in on their own. And Chris Woodhouse has very easily picked off Dan Gore there for second place, the number four. Delara, which is on. Slick tyres, you can see. Yeah, absolutely. So the slick tyres are now starting to work for everybody. That's why Chris Woodhouse is working his way through up through the order. That's why Jason Timms has worked his way up through the order. But the race win will go the way in the penultimate round of the Monoposto Championship. Chris Davidson claims the win. In second place is going to be Chris Woodhouse. Third place to Dan Gore, who started from pole position. But that's still a win for him in the Mono 1000 class. Uh, the Lee Stone of uh, O'Brien. Carl O'Brien finishes in fifth position. Jason Timms finishes in sixth place. And what's going to happen for seventh place? Because Simon Tate and Neil Harrison were still squabbling over it. It's Neil Harrison that has uh, unpicked uh, Simon Tate on the final lap. So Neil Harrison, number 10, comes through to complete the top six. Simon Tate, the number 15 car in seventh place. Eighth place will be number 40. Uh, which will be the car of Chris Baldwin. Ninth place will be 17. That's Bruno Costa. That's a good result from him in the JKS from 23rd on the grid up to ninth. And Anthony Gauntlet following his spin. He was running in fifth place, but spin on the penultimate lap, just heading out to the final corner, will drop him to the bottom of the top 10. So everybody else filing their way over the start finish line. And we will see these Monoposto racing cars back out on track for their final round of the 2021 Championship later on this afternoon. It's scheduled to be around about quarter past four. Last couple of cars to take the chequered flag, just threading their way through. And one of them will include number 98, Rodney Toft, who's been a long-time competitor nowadays in the Monoposto Championship. And I think Darren Richards is the black and the light green car that's just at the tail end of the shot as he comes over to take the chequered flag. And I think that's largely now everybody that has taken the chequered flag. So for Chris Davidson, that for him is another win. And in terms of the Mono F3 Championship, he has missed a few races and had a bit of bad luck along the way, so he's not in the hunt to claim the overall Mono F3 Championship, but he will be delighted with grabbing a win, and that is as a result of the other win he took yesterday. That is the first time he's had back-to-back -back victories in the Mono F3 category uh, this season, and that now means that it's four class wins for him for the 2021 Championship season, so he'll be chuffed with that over the course of this weekend. Chris, who used to race Westfields a good number of years ago and has been heavily involved with the tyre development over the years. He used to spend a lot of time uh, plodding around racetracks in various supercars, just doing tyre testing for numerous car manufacturers, both uh, within the UK and in particular, he spent a lot of time in Europe doing that as well, tyre development. So into the pit lane now, come. Just confirm the results, results for you. Number 31, Chris Davidson, having claimed the win. And in second place, it was Chris Woodhouse. Third place goes the way of Dan Gore, but he is the first car home in the Mono 1000 class, whereas the two ahead are in the, all in Mono F3. And fourth place goes the way of Carl O'Brien. Fifth place was Jason Timms. He won Mono 1400. Sixth place was Neil Harrison. Seventh place from Simon Tate. And eighth place goes the way of the number 40 car of Chris Baldwin. Uh, and in ninth place, that's where we see Bruno Costa. And completing the top 10 was Anthony Gauntlet at the wheel of his Jedi. Uh, 11th place is going to be Bryn Tootle. He was the winner of the Mono 2000 class. James Lederman finished in 12th place, head of uh, 13th place Nigel Davis and 14th place which was the number 71 car that had a few problems in hands of uh, Declan Wright uh, along the way. Uh, James Tanser was 15th, head of James Rimmer in 16th, with Terry Clark in 17th position, and 18th place was Russ Giles, head of Lee Fern, who was only 19th in that race. Uh, Newman was there in 20th place, and Morgan McCourt completing the top 21. Uh, outside of the top 21 in 22nd position was Martin Wright, Juan, Juan Moreno finished in 23rd. Uh, Will McAteer in 24th place would have taken the mono. Classic class by the look of things. Jared Wood was 25th. Chris Levy 26th uh, and then in 27th position that was the number 56 car of Tom Wheatley 28th 
uh, was Phil Davis after his spin. 29th was Mike Hatton. Rodney Toft was 30th. And I think Darren Richards was the last of the cars over the start finish line in what was 32nd position. Uh, Peter Whitmore was there in 30, uh, sorry, in 32nd place. Then it was uh, uh, Jeff Fern with problems before we saw David Jones, Miles Castaldini, and also Sam Donnell running into problems over the course of that penultimate race of the season for the Monoposto Championship. So we will see the Monoposto cars back out later on here at Donington Park. That will be around about quarter past four this afternoon. So from everybody here for the moment, at least it's goodbye.